All right, so today I'm going to talk about lead management in Sugar CRM. This, uh, this slide deck is changed up a little bit to consolidate all of the other slides that we have on the topic just for this meetup uh, so we could get it all condensed into a given amount of time. Uh, as you go out or as you look through these, these slides will be posted up. They'll be available on our SlideShare, slideshare.com slash at core systems. And with that, you'll also have the YouTube available on, or the YouTube of the presentation and what I'm about to say here. So if you need any other resources, you can go out to our website. You'll find the ebook for download. So we have a full 47 page plus ebook on lead management and sugar CRM. We have a Kindle book on amazon.com. We have the, all the slides on SlideShare, and they're broken out into significantly more detail than I'm gonna have time to go into today. So if you need to know more about any of these topics, go into SlideShare, check those out, and you can dive down in. So before I go to the next slide, can anybody tell me how, what they define as a lead? What is a lead? I think it's a person that you have a relationship with or initial relationship with that you might do business with in the future. Okay. Any others? All right. So at Accor Systems, we define a lead as unqualified data. It could also be, like John said, an unqualified person or contact. So what does that mean from an unqualified perspective? It's, I got a business card from this person. I met them at a networking event. I have a conference list from a conference that I went to or I attended. We had a booth at and got a download from that. Any of those are what's considered a lead. They're unqualified, very different from contacts in the system. With this, uh, we also recommend writing a definition for your lead. So as you heard, John has one definition, I have another, other people in the room have different definitions. And one thing that you really wanna do is you wanna outline and document what your definition of a lead is to your salespeople. If you give them a definition of a lead, it makes it a lot more difficult for them to put it in the wrong place in your CRM. Uh, we see it all the time. People get a business card, they go add it as a contact, they add it as an opportunity account, whatever it might be. And with that, it's gonna muddle up certain amounts of data or add lots of data to your system that may not necessarily be applicable at this point in time. So if you have a definition, you can give that to your salespeople and say, here's what a lead is, here's the channels that leads come through. So in talking about the channels that leads come through, there's lots of ways that leads can be created. So if you look at leads, they can create, be creative one of many different ways. So in the top left, this kind of depicts entering it manually into the CRM system. You also have Gmail and Outlook integrations. You have tablet and iPhone, iPad apps, uh, Android apps where they can be entered in right after you get a call or an email from that device. You have web to lead forms. So if you have a lead form on your website for somebody to fill in, then you're gonna get information from that form. You can also have imports like a CSV, a purchase list, a list from a conference and import those in in mass, as well as marketing automation integrations where you get lead scoring and other variable information, A-B testing on the landing pages and see how people are converting. So those are just one of, you know, multiple, or those are multiple different ways out of uh, an infinite number almost of ways that people can get leads into the CRM. And the most important part of this is really understanding where they're coming from and where they need to go based on the context. So for example, going back to defining a lead, if you get a lead through a form, then it's automatically gonna to go to leads. But maybe you have a different form on your website where they give you a lot more detailed data. Maybe you get a person's information and you send them a form to fill out that's a web to lead form. You give them a, a, like more of a private link where they give you qualifying data. That may need to go into another part of your CRM instead of leads. So it's really good to map out the process of where they come from and what information qualifies it as a lead or should it go in as another record. Now when leads come in through all of these different channels, the next thing people need to do a lot of times is route them. So there's all kinds of routing options in Sugar. Sugar by default has a full workflow engine. So if you look at Sugar Pro Enterprise and Ultimate, there's a workflow engine in, in that system that can look at various fields and you can configure it to route those leads. So for example, if I get a lead that comes in through a lead form, and we have state on there and we want to know the state or the number of employees we can look at that state and set up a workflow in sugar's workflow engine to route it to the correct person for that state you may have a representative in that state 
You can also do it by the source. So if it comes from a certain website, a certain portal, it may go to a certain person. It may go to a lead qualification person first as it gets qualified, reassigned to a salesperson. So what you would need to do is map all of these channels as part of your process and see what the routing rules are that you can set up in the workflow engine. And then with that, there's also additional workflow engines that are available for Sugar like Process Maker. So if Sugar doesn't have a workflow or a unique lookup item in the base product, you can use a third party add-on and add in approvals and other routing options to that with the Process Maker add-on. Any questions so far? <clears throat> process Maker, so how is that different than the workflows that are in Sugar? Couple different ways. So. Sugar out of the box has a few different ways that it does workflows. It does workflows based on an action in the system. So a, you know, a record saved, say a lead saved and the value is equal to state of Georgia. Well, it's gonna route based on that. The other thing that Sugar has is a time elapse workflow. So say a case comes in and four hours has gone by since somebody's touched it, it's gonna route or take some sort of action based on that. So the two different actions in Sugar are you know, on action and on time elapse. And with Process Maker, it enhances that even more and can do other, uh, basically other enhanced versions of workflows. One example would be approval. So a lead comes in and somebody needs approval to work on it or um, a case comes in and it needs to be escalated. It has a lot of escalation and approval add-ons to the Process Maker. It also does some relational mapping so for example, in Sugar, if you wanted to route by state, you'd have to create a number of workflow rules to route by state. And that may take you a little bit of time. In Process Maker, there's lookup tables. So it has various lookup tables when you have 50 states or 50 states and you know, zip codes that are factored in and lots of other logic that come into that, Process Maker makes it easier to manage. So once these leads are in the system, they've, been, they've come through all of these different channels, they've been routed to the right person, the next step is really to make sure that all of the leads are being managed in the same way. What I mean by that is what status are they in and is that status consistent across all salespeople? So one thing that we like to do and one thing we recommend for any CRM implementation is to define all of these statuses. So here it's a little hard to see, uh, but we've grayed out new, assigned, this one's highlighted as in process, converted and recycled. So these are some of the default statuses when you install Sugar CRM out of the box. And what we like to do is go in and provide a definition for each sales rep or for each status to all the sales reps. So when we hire a new sales rep, we give them a list and say, here's all the statuses, here's what those statuses mean. And what that does is it keeps all of them consistent in the pipeline. You need to know if in process means they're talking to them, um, that they're just, this is just um, a very vague status and people just put it in this whenever, in this status whenever they're working on a lead. Or is it a status where in process means they're having a bi-directional conversation? The reason you need to know this is to understand your lead pipeline and how many leads are in the pipeline that are gonna convert over to opportunities and get any details around the flow, right? It's hard to project and understand how many leads are gonna turn into opportunities if all of them are in a big vague bucket like in process. Question? So, who changes the status of the lead? Who's I mean, who would you recommend to change that? Usually it's the sales rep's responsibility to change the status of a lead. So as they're working on that lead, they're gonna change the status. So other statuses could be qualified. It may be qualified, but not converted yet. They may have filled out all of the questions and answers. You may use uh, the workflow engine to automatically change statuses. So if I get an email response from this person, or if I log a call, uh, of if I log a call and set the disposition that I spoke to the lead, it automatically changes the status. So you can use some workflows to change those statuses instead of manually doing them. But it's usually the responsibility of the sales rep. Yeah, so what do you do if you can't qualify a lead? Well, we'll talk about qualification in just a moment, but generally if you can't qualify a lead then it's, and it stays unqualified, then it's either gonna go into a state of dead or closed, whatever, you know, out of the box, I think Sugars is dead 
And you also have nurture modes where if you put it into nurture, it may add it to another email campaign. So if it's not qualified, you're not going to do a deal with them. You want to keep that record in the system so you know you spoke to them, but you're going to set it to a status that's uh, applicable for that. So one example of this is a status that we added to our system at our core systems. We added one that says engaged. So in process means that we are reaching out to this lead. We're trying to make contact. Maybe they initially contacted us. Uh, maybe we got their name. Maybe we're prospecting and they're in process. Well, we added engaged so we know that we're having a bi-directional communication with this person. So if I'm having a bi-directional communication, then they're, they're, they're a lot further along in the lead or the sales funnel than if they were in process or they were new or assigned, whatever it might be. Any questions? All right. So I just mentioned we that we added a new um, a new value to ours. We've customized ours a lot more than that. It doesn't really use many of the out of the box options. But if you want to customize yours in the admin area of Sugar Serum, if you haven't been in there, it's very easy to customize fields and drop downs. What you'll see is the drop down editor. You'll go into that drop down editor and you'll be able to edit and change all of those values. Um, we're not going to go into studio and changing fields in this one, but uh, or in this presentation. But if you look back in our slide deck on slideshare.com slash core systems, you will see that all of the all of the screenshots on how to do this are in that are in the slide deck. So the next thing we're going to talk about is lead conversion. So lead conversion is what you do when you qualify that lead. So the lead becomes qualified uh, in one of many different ways that we'll, we'll talk about in just a moment. But when that lead is qualified, you convert it and it becomes an account, a contact, an opportunity, and any other records. This in Sugar is a very simple process of clicking convert button and it's gonna give you a menu item to, or a screen that allows you to create all of those elements very quickly and break them out. So what do I mean by qualifying a lead? Uh, qualifying a lead is gonna be different for every organization. Uh, many organizations have uh, you know, they can be B2B, they can be B2C, they can be run very different ways. They can consider qualified lead something where a deal value and a probability of closing is assigned. So you spoke to a person and you know what the deal value is. Uh, it could be certain questions are answered. So like at AtCore Systems, we have six primary questions that need to be answered in order to convert a lead. If those six questions aren't answered, then it's not considered qualified by us. You also have things like lead scores. So if you have a lead score, maybe it's a combination of all of these. You know, you found out the deal value, you've assigned a probability of closing, maybe you do some matching on the region and other historical deals that you've closed to give it a score, they've answered questions, and when they meet a certain score, then you convert the lead. And if not, you go back and you find, more, find out more information and do more research as a salesperson. So these are just some common examples of converting a lead, uh, or excuse me, qualifying a lead. Any questions here? So the deal value probability of closing, mm -hmm. so how is that determined again? Just depends on what's been done? Yeah, it depends on the business. So there's, there's pros and cons to this. If you look at deal value for say a consulting company like ours, if I understand the deal value and the probability of close, who we're up against, how far along they are in the, in the research cycle or in the sales cycle uh, for themselves, I may be able to assign a deal value and that gives me a certain level, that gives me a level of certainty around what's gonna happen. So I would assign that as a sales rep, I'd say, hey, this is X number dollar a deal or this is X dollar deal and give it the probability that I think it's gonna be of closing. You know, maybe it's 10%, maybe the probabilities matched up against values in the lead dropdown as well. So, is this, I mean, it sounds like this is talking a little bit about opportunities also. Is that it is. too distinct or? Yeah, so what happens is, is with a lead, you're going to hit convert lead, and that's going to convert it to an account, the business, and it's going to convert it to a contact, and it's also going to create an opportunity off of that. So if you're going to create an opportunity off of a lead in the system, you're going to need to know, you know, expected close date, the value of the opportunity, and any other information you need for that opportunity. Um, so that's all about deal value. Now, inversely, you know, how could that go wrong is another question. Well, 
if you use deal value and you sell a product that is a set price, does that mean that too many leads are gonna be converted because your sales rep knows the value? If you do training for $995 and that's all your organization does is sign up people to do training and I get you on the phone and find out you're interested and the deal value is always 995 and I fill that in and convert, that's not really helpful for knowing where you are in the pipeline. So that's where I need to get into more than deal value, I need to get into questions that are answered. Um, when are you looking to get trained? Why are you looking at this training? You know, any, all of your general sales questions of the who, what, why, how, when, everything else. Another thing that we see is some people can, uh, will want to skip the lead stage. So what do I mean by that? I mean that, you know, maybe you already have an account that you're talking to and you know three or four people in that account and you have an opportunity in the pipeline and you can go enter it today. You may skip the lead stage completely. Now, depending on, this could depend on if this is part of your process. Maybe there's things that happen where you have to enter the lead first and then convert the data just because some other it gets augmented by other systems based on your process um, or you may skip it completely and just add it in so an example of that is if we get a lead or if we get an opportunity from a partner so we already know that the partner has spoken to this person we already know the deal value we already know how far along they are so we're going to consider that an opportunity instead of a lead because it's pre-qualified with some certain amount of data and so we'll skip the lead stage completely and put that right in as a contact account and opportunity. Any questions on getting leads in the system all the way through the converting? All right. So the next thing that we're going to look at is just viewing leads. What are the different ways to view leads in Sugar CRM? In Sugar CRM, uh, this is going to be common for most CRM systems, but the four primary ways to view a lead is the dashboards, the list views, uh, a listing of all of those leads, reports, and target lists. So I'm gonna switch over to a live view of Sugar CRM and show you a couple of these. All right, so the first one I had on the list is dashboards. So in Sugar CRM, you can create any number of custom dashboards that you'd like with charts, graphs, list views, all highly customizable by hitting the configure button. Up in the top left, you'll also see that I can have a quick link to any of those dashboards in the system. So if I wanna switch between my leads dashboard and my home dashboard, I can easily switch between those two. What you see up here is the list view on the left, which outlines all of the leads that are in a certain category. They could be assigned to a certain person, whatever it might be. In this, in this instance, they're all assigned to Chris Oliver, which is the sales representative that I'm logged in as. Um, with that, as Chris Oliver, when I'm working throughout the day, I just go here to see my leads and nurture them along, figure out who I need to call, and go from there. I can also sort by status, so I may not want recycled or dead in here. I can run filters and filter those out so I see just the leads that I wanna see at the beginning of the day or throughout the day. The other thing that I've added to here is more of a management report, and this is leads by source, uh, maybe even more of a marketing report if they wanna know where, their leads, where the leads are coming from. So if the data is in Sugar CRM, then you can run a report on it and you can add it to a dashboard. When you add it to the dashboard, it's available to all the people who have permissions to that data or to that report. So what we like to do is we like to do matching or what I call paired reports. So the salesperson will have a lead dashboard or their home dashboard with a certain set of information that, they're, um, they're, that they have to work during the day. And then the manager will have a corresponding dashboard of the same data. So for example, if I have Ryan as a salesperson, Ryan is gonna have a list of all of his leads in a certain status so that he can work them. But if I really wanna see how many he has engaged, I'm gonna have a dashboard that says Ryan's engaged leads and I'm gonna get a quantity or I'm gonna get a chart of those. So that allows me to make sure that he's managing his day based on the reports that he's being held accountable to or the data he's being account held accountable to by myself. Any questions on dashboards? All right. The other area that I mentioned was the list view. So if you just click the leads button at the top, you're gonna to get the full list view in Sugar CRM of the leads. This is a really easy way to go through 
and parse through any number of leads that you need during the day. Same thing as a dashboard, you can use the filters in here to search based on those. So if you go up here and you create a new filter, I can say, give me every lead assigned to me, Chris Oliver, as well as ones that are in statuses that equal in process, engage, new, assigned, whatever it might be. So I'm gonna be able to filter that data as I need on this view. I can, always, I can also customize the right-hand panel based on what I wanna see in my leads view. So if I want a chart that shows me all the leads assigned to me by status, I can put that chart over off to the right and that's gonna be a chart that's tailored just to what I need to see when I go into the system. That's not gonna be a, a global setting. Um, so that's a default value of dead and normally that's, you know, you spoke to the person, you spoke to that lead and you decided there was no business opportunity there. So, you know, I spoke to you and you said, I'm not interested, don't call me again, whatever it might be, you're going to go into dead. Whereas a lot of people, uh, one recommendation we make and what we've seen in, in various instances is something like recycled where you bring it back. Uh, over a period of time. So they may have had an interest in the past, but you bring back all your recycled and retarget them again. We also see nurture. So, hey, it's not dead. I'm not telling you not to call me, but I would like to get some information ongoing and I'm just not interested right now. So I can put you in a nurture mode. Maybe that automatically adds you to your, um, your sales fusion marketing campaign or your drip campaign or the email newsletter. And then you're going to get that lead, you know, you're, excuse me, you're going to nurture that lead on, on an ongoing basis. So how do you get to recycled then? What's the so recycled is, is again, it's, these are all defaults, but that's to bring it back. So say you have dead or nurtured and you go back and you decide that there's some criteria that you have to bring them back and have your business development rep work them. So what I'll do is you can go through and say, give me all the leads where they've been in nurture for more than six months. And what we're gonna do is we're going to set them to recycled. And when we set them to recycled, maybe that kicks off a workflow to reroute them back, back out to the sales team. So it could be an interim. Um, if you have a smaller sales team, when you decide to recycle, you may just grab all of them, set them all to new and reassign them to that person. Or you may wanna leave them as recycled and have the salesperson know that this isn't a new lead, this is a recycled lead, so you leave it in the recycled status when you hand it off. After that, they can change it to the appropriate value. Yeah, so there's a couple different ways to do that. And that all comes down to, you know, it, it all comes down to the process of the business and how they want to handle those various items. So the other thing that I mentioned was reports. I'm not going to go into the reporting engine, but as you can see up in the top middle, there's a reports button. You can report on any data in Sugar CRM. If, again, if the data lives in Sugar, you can report on it. And there's other add-ons to report on data that isn't in Sugar or data combined with Sugar and a third-party system. Um, what you'll get out of reports is you'll get data like this over on the right-hand side where it says leads by lead source. So you may do a summation report with details where it gives you that chart and it gives you all the details by grouping. So it would give you all of the leads that are in that cold call status, that blue bar, as well as a list of the leads that are in that status where it gives you the name and the email and other criteria around that. So the reports are going to be another way that you can slice and dice the data. It's going to give you more filtering options. It's going to give you more viewing options and more charting options than the list view. So those are a couple different ways to view them, you know, going from the dashlet on the dashboard to the list view with the filters all the way over to the reporting engine. And then lastly, what I wanted to talk about was target lists. Uh, we've gone into a number of organizations that have been using Sugar for a while and find out they're not using target lists. And we like target lists for a couple different reasons, mainly for salespeople. Target list is a way to add and remove people as needed from a list that the salesperson is working themselves. So for example, if a salesperson says, I need to go call this person, this person, you know, I need to call these number of people, what they can do is they can go over here and add it to a target list pretty quickly and build their own custom criteria or list of people that they need to reach out to. So say for example, earlier we talked about a lead being ab above a certain score. Well, maybe every time a lead is under, over a score of 15, we automatically add it to this list based on a workflow. Uh, maybe they just search and see a lead score as a column and they go in and grab those based on status and add them to a target list. 
So what they would do is they would add it to a target list from here. And I don't have any created. So what I'll do is I'll create one real quick. And as I create it, as you see, it automatically fills it back in. So it's pretty quick and easy and painless to create a target list on the fly and add them all to it. So I'll update this. And now six records were successfully added to that target list. Now what I can do is I can jump over to the target list from here and I can work from, from that target list all day. So as I scroll down, I'll see the lead. If I have click to call integration, I'll just click the phone number from there. I'll log various pieces of information as I'm going through it. I'll see the emails that are logged from it. And if I come across a lead that says, yes, I'm interested, I can click that lead and convert them and then get rid of the lead. So say for example, I go into Dale and I spoke to Dale and I converted this lead what I can do is I can go over here and unlink and pull Dale right out of my target list because he doesn't need to be in that target list anymore. He's no longer in my lead list. He's going to be in my opportunities. He's going to show up in my opportunity dashlets that I'm working on my dashboard. He's going to show up in my opportunity list view and so on. So that's a really easy way to make a dynamic list for a salesperson where they control what does and doesn't show up. We also see people do this from reporting because reporting can do really good complex filtering. Uh, the problem is, is it's a little harder to pull it out of a report. So what you have to do is take a little bit of an extra step to have another field that's triggered that automatically pulls them out of the report on the back end. So you can automate around that. Any questions around viewing data, viewing leads? So the target list, um, are you using those mostly for just listing leads or could you use it for inputting prospects as well? Yeah, you can use it for prospects. So as you see in the sub panels, you have targets, contacts, leads. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see users and campaigns as well. So if you have just a bucket of targets that you wanna use and you don't wanna use leads, some people like to use targets instead and say, you know, targets are even less qualified than a lead. We'll take a list that we purchase and we'll, we'll put them in as targets. Um, if you want contacts, you can make a contact list. So say an account manager, you have um, you have the contact indicators add-on, which says every time a lead hasn't been contacted for, or excuse me, a contact hasn't been reached out to in more than 90 days, then automatically add them to a target list for the account manager to go call on. So you can use workflows to add contacts to do account management. You can have dynamic lists of cases, work it from a leads perspective, and any other element that's in here. Target lists are also used for email campaigns. So if you see campaigns at the bottom, you can link the target list or a number of target list segments, basically, to a campaign for the email process. So this may be a little bit off, but if, you're, if you have a target, if you have enter a prospect as a target, can you convert that target to a lead? Is there such a thing as that? Or? Yeah, you can convert it through the flow. So you'll go in and take that target to a lead and then lead to an opportunity. So if you go in and create a target, it's going to look very similar to a lead. Or excuse me, yeah, to a lead. So it has account name, title, so on and so forth. So you can go through you know, the same conversion process to get it all the way into the system. Can you add from a bot list into the target like you would into a lead? Or is that a process that's not? Add from what list? So if you have a list that you're bringing into your system, yeah. like, um, like a purchase list, of um, contacts, could you add that to a target? Yeah, so you can import them all in and you can import them and link them to a target list once they're imported. So that's another way to segment your data and see what's going on with that. Say you have a call list or you have a conference list. A lot of people will take that conference list, they'll import it in as a target list in here. Um, it'll import all the leads, link it to a target list and send out a campaign. Hey, I saw you at the uh, or thanks, thanks for coming by our booth at XYZ conference. And they're going to send out that email campaign as well as they're going to use that same list to go out and do some calling. Yeah. So all of that can be linked up. All right. The last thing we were going to talk about is searching leads. 
So we went through the various ways to view leads, and that's not an all-encompassing list. Let me get that from the beginning here. So we talked about how to view leads, all the different ways you can get them, and you know, with reports, with dashboards, list views, and so on, uh, target lists. And what we want to look at next is how do you search these leads? How do you get to the leads that you want? So you have global search, which I'll highlight, filters, and then reports. Again, I'm not going to go into reports. Uh, you can look on the Accor Systems YouTube channel or just go out to YouTube and search Sugar CRM reports. There are lots of great videos on how to build reports out there. But that's where you get into really the complex filtering. And what I see is this is kind of a a curve on complexity. So global search is the easiest way to find something. It's a one box up in the top right hand corner of Sugar CRM. You can search any anything in the system. So that's going to be your easiest. Uh, secondly, on the list view where I showed the filter earlier, you can create filters and you can create complex filters on the data so you can get them in the list view. And I'll just hop over to that real quick so you can see it live. So up here in the search box, this is the global search. You're going to be able to click and get, you know, search any system, any, excuse me, any module that you'd like to. If you want to narrow that down to just leads, then you can put it. You can just click the leads box, or you can search all. So obviously, that doesn't give you a whole lot of filtering options. It's going to just search everything in the system. If you go over to the leads list view, you're going to be able to create complex filters. There's a there's a set of preset filters here that you can look at. So all leads, my favorites, my favorites are the ones tagged with a little star on the left hand side. My leads, which are all the leads assigned to you, or in this case, Chris Oliver as I'm logged in, recently created and recently viewed. So recently created gets you a quick view of the ones that were created in the system that you may need to jump on pretty quickly. And then recently viewed is the ones that you've been working on, mostly going back and forth between, kind of like um, breadcrumbs or um, it's just something that you can get back to very efficiently. You can also create these. So if you want to hit create, you'll select what you want to filter on. So say, for example, I want to filter on status or I want to filter on state. Then I'll be able to click the state, do exact matches, start with, and filter out this list straight from here. So this filtering is going to give me lots of different options to filter those just from this view. Then the most complex level or the, the more consuming portion is going in and creating a full report. So you'll see the same filtering, uh, a similar style of filtering in the reports, but with reports it adds the ability to filter on related records. So you may say, I not only want, I not only want leads that are in the state of Georgia, which I can filter on here, but I also want leads in the state of Georgia that haven't had a call logged to them. Somebody hasn't called on that lead. So I can go in and do the related, find related information and do related filtering in reports. Reports is also going to add data from other modules in Sugar, so from a viewing perspective. So here, all the columns are from leads, from the leads module. Now, if I also wanted to see the call record or other details around the campaign that they were on or other related data, I would be able to pull that in from the report. So a little more complex, but doesn't take too long to master reports in Sugar. Any questions on any of those? <coughs> so this is, what is this, seven? Um, this is 7.2. Two? Okay. Yeah. So the, I guess one of the differences is the search. Like I call that the Google of sugar, I guess. The Google of sugar? The that Google would work. Sugar, yeah, it searches, searches everything. It's one simple right. box. Right. Yeah. But I guess you can now filter it. Even the, the global search, you can filter it down. You can, and you could do that in 6.5 as well, in 6.7, I believe. Uh, they just made it really easy here where you can just check the boxes and move forward. Yeah. The, you know, what's the, what's the reason for that? You know, mainly just narrowing down the data set that you're going to get returned. So it's going to search uh, with the new Elastic search that came out a few versions ago. No matter what you're searching in global search, it's really fast. Um, but if you really just need to be searching through leads or contacts or whatever it might be, you can check that pretty quickly instead of clicking over and doing criteria in the filter style. Is there a difference in wildcards in Sugar 75 or they change anything like that? That's a great question. So if we want uh, Amos here and we go type Amos, we're probably going to get him. But if we do percentage sign, which is the wildcard in Sugar, and do MOS, then it's going to pop up Amos and then we have Raymond as well. 
Um, so let's take out the percentage sign and see what we get. So we still got um, we still got Raymond because his last name starts with the MOS, but we didn't get Amos because his le his name starts with an A. So what Sugar does with the percentage sign in the wild card is it basically automatically adds whatever you'd consider a wild card to the end. So if it starts with MOS, it's going to find it here. If you need it to have MOS in it, then you'll just add the percent sign. And this is good for companies that use acronyms or you don't know how they're spell, spelled or names that start with a C or a K, whatever it might be. You have some context of what the issue is or how to find them. You can put in a wild card. What have you seen as being the most useful, uh, the, the, the best use of, say, a report for managing leads? What, what would you for managing leads? So the best use of reporting is going to come from whether more, it's going to come from your role in the organization. So say, for example, you're a sales rep then you want your dashboard and your report to tell you the information you need to create action, right? Uh, from a sales perspective, as a salesperson, my job is to go out and create new sales, close sales, and nurture people through the pipeline. So what I need to know as a sales rep is, who do I need to reach out to? Who haven't I contacted in a given period of time? Who am I not giving enough attention to? What actions do I need to really take? So you may have a pipeline chart that shows people in various stages of that pipeline. Um, the ones that you never reached out to on a prospecting list that's outbound that you know they never did any inbound, you have a little more time on those than you do if somebody filled out a lead form on the website. Right? If they filled out a lead form on the website, you need to get to that in you know, preferably minutes. Uh, the, that's gonna make an impact. So from that perspective, you're gonna want all new or all assigned leads that were newly created to pop up right in your dashboard as soon as possible and notify you via email like Sugar does out of the box so that you can jump on that. Um, from a management perspective, that's going to change a little bit. From a management perspective, the reports that you're going to want to get are um, from a coaching perspective. What, how do you, what data can you get out of the system to help coaching? At least that's my philosophy is, you know, I'm here to grow salespeople. Uh, as a manager, I'm not here to grow sales, I'm here to grow salespeople. So, I don't want to know as much about the pipeline. I need to know about the pipeline because the people I report to need to know the pipeline. But when it comes to the data I need to see, it's what can I do to help trigger action in my salesperson or see a coaching opportunity. So I may want to see that a lead's been in a certain stage for a little while so I can go over and ask about that lead. How's that lead doing? You know, what do we need to do to help them? Is there any impediments on that? Is there data that we need to get out? Um, or is there data missing that we need to get to that sale, to that prospect, whatever it might be? Any other questions? All right. Well, that's all I have for today, John. Great. Thank you, Josh. Good for your, are there any final questions? Did you have something, Ryan? Yeah, you can applaud. <laughs> Thank you for your insight, Josh. Um, so I had a, a few follow-up things I wanted to ask you. So obviously, leads are near and dear to your heart, I guess, right? So do you have any process, can you give us any tools that you would use to prospect uh, for new leads? Lead prospecting tools. There's lots of tools out there. Um, what we generally see is people using LinkedIn. So uh, the Sales Loft Prospector tool is a good one for mining LinkedIn data and going out and finding that and getting it into your CRM system. There's also going out to DNB or having a DNB account where you can pull it right into Sugar CRM. So DNB has a great integration in 7.5 where you can create dynamic target lists like we showed today and pull all of that data into Sugar to go do prospecting and outbound calls. Uh, so those are probably the two most common tools that, that we see. Okay. And it sounds like in 7.5 or maybe 7.6 that DNB will be closer integrated into sugar. Or yeah, actually, sorry, I misspoke. Um, we've been talking about 7.5 a lot lately. DMB integrations in 7.2, I believe. So, or it is in 7.2. Uh, it wasn't, I think it was introduced in 7.2 and then 7.5 is gonna get further integration of DNB. Okay. So can you give us some websites that we should look at as far as like at core or are there other websites that we can look at for learning more about the leads? For learning more about leads specifically, um, 
there's lots of sales blogs out there. You know, go search inside sales. Uh, I believe insidesales.com has some good, some great resources out there. Uh, I use Feedly myself to go search sales blogs and read some of the top blogs that are out there. They have great information on cold calling and prospecting and warm calling, warm emails, uh, everything that goes in is involved around uh, leads and managing those. So who would be your top um, sales mentor or somebody like that that you might read a lot about or you follow their blog or that sort of thing? Uh, we're heavily into the predictable revenue model. So right now the predictable revenue model uh, gives you all kinds of data about how other companies have built their sales and lead prospecting methodologies and we use that pretty heavily. Is there one, maybe one company or something like that that you've seen that has a really strong methodology around building a lead process that you try to emulate or you try to model? Or to be just maybe like, I think the models, you know, most of the model on prospecting is in the predictable revenue book and the upcoming book that they're working on, that team is working on. Um, so with that, you know, those are the models we like. The companies we see that are most successful around leads are the ones who have a well-defined process. So when we go out to a company and we're working with somebody who can pull out the Visio diagram of the channels that they came in through and when they came in through a certain channel, they go into specific statuses and the statuses are defined, everything's very clean and clear. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're just trying to get them into the system ad hoc, it's a little less clear. Okay. Yeah, I know sometimes in some of my trainings I've seen we have salespeople who are seasoned salespeople mm -hmm. who don't even know what a lead is or you know how they have it defined. So. Yeah, and there's just so many definitions and people that come from different organizations. You know, if if you have salespeople that if you have a 30-person sales team and they all came from different companies, which is most likely the case, then they all have a concept of a lead before they come in. And if somebody doesn't hand them a new definition of what it is for the the company that they're at now then you basically have 30 different definitions of a lead by default. Okay. And uh, default's not generally the way you want to manage a sales team. Right. <laughs> All right, so one last thing. So are there any final thoughts or final recommendations that you would want to leave us, leave us with using lead management at Sugar Sierra? Like something maybe to summarize your thoughts on it at all? Or uh, I think the biggest thing is, you know, look at the ROI, manage it by the data. You know, the great thing about Sugar is it can store any amount of data that you want on these leads. So if you want to know, you know, how long it takes to close a lead, how long a lead is in a given stage, where are your bottlenecks, it's very easy to determine. There's add-ons that help with that as well. And so, you know, if you manage by the data, then you can break down bottlenecks for your sales team. Yeah, right. Thank you.